welcome to my channel and my first YouTube video. A lot of you have been asking me for a while to start a YouTube channel and start posting videos about art, little tutorials and just talking about what I do and how I do it. I decided to go ahead and give it a try but before I get into all of that. I wanted to, to do this first video just kind of introducing myself, letting you know who I am, why I do what I do and how I got to do what I do and just kind of let you know about my background and all of that stuff. One of the first questions that I get asked when people see my art is when did I get started? When did I start painting? So to get there I wanted to just kind of go back from the beginning all the way to my childhood and let you know all the things that I've done that got me to what I do now. I'm sure you have not noticed my accent but in case you did, I am from Dominican Republic. I was born and raised in Santo Domingo, the capital of the DR, which is an island in the Caribbean. I grew up there and ever since I can remember I've been drawing and painting and just have had something in my hands where I can create. Growing up on an island, you get to see a lot of visual things, a lot of art, a lot of vibrant colors. There's the water, there are palm trees, there is a bird flying, little different things. Now, I went to a school that was located right across from the ocean in El Malecón. El Malecón is a street that, that runs right next to the ocean. And along that street, there would always be little artists that would lay out their art across the street. It always captured my attention. My mom put me in one of those, um, in a class outside of school and I got to learn more from it. But growing up, and I don't mean to get off subject here, but growing up, I grew up as a little tomboy, believe it or not. But I did. Most of the time I was with my brothers and my guy cousins and then their friends, so it was just a bunch of guys and then me. So I grew up doing things that guys do. I grew up watching Dragon Ball, playing Halo, Taekwondo classes, set things on fire. My mom wanted to put me in ballet and I was like, ew, no, that's too girly. I grew up getting into like little fights, not, you know, actual fights, but between cousins and friends, you, you would start little wars with the BB guns. I don't even know what those are called, but you know, the plastic little balls that are red or yellow, which freaking hurt. But I would do all kinds of things, like just be a boy with my boys. So <laughs> it, was, it was a great childhood. I had a lot of fun. Anyways, I don't know why I was telling that story, but we're back on track. As a kid, I was really, really shy extremely shy and so as a kid this, that was always very reserved art it just was my comfort zone i would lay on the ground lay on the floor and start painting and drawing and all of that and and so that's kind of where it all started at the age of 14 my mom she met my stepdad decided to move to the united states i didn't really want to move because obviously at 14 years old, I love being around my friends, I love being around my family, I love my school, I, I enjoyed being there and growing up there. Of course, at that age, you don't know much, you know, like outside of your surrounding, you, you don't really know much of anything else. It was tough, it was hard during that transition. I didn't know any English. I knew this little song that most of you won't know. Pollito, chicken, gallina, hen, lapis, pencil, y pluma, pen. It goes on a little bit longer than that. And <laughs> the song basically just says one word in Spanish and then one word in English. On my first day of school, I'm like, okay, what words do I know? I could not communicate. And I would think pencil, I need a pencil. And then I would sing the song in my head. I'm like, how do you say Pencil in English. I'm like, okay, pollito, chicken, gallina, hen, lapis, pencil. Okay, pencil. <laughs> so the only words I knew were from that song. Being able to know two languages, it helped me a lot. From French or Spanish, I was able to make the connection in English, and that helped me learn English pretty quickly. Never got rid of the accent, like freaking accent. I can't. It's not going anywhere, it's annoying, and I'm sorry for those who have to listen to it. It is what it is, that, that's it. Fast forward to high school. 
I got to my senior year where, you know, everyone's asking questions like, okay, what are you gonna major in? What are you gonna study when you get to college? What are you gonna do? What do you wanna be? And that was tough because in my mind, like I knew I wanted to do art one way or another. I wanted to do something related to art. That was my passion. And when you get asked all these questions, like most people are gonna tell you like, art? Like, how are you gonna make money out of that? Like, how are you gonna make a living? Or even if they didn't say anything, like their facial expression just said it all. I wasn't really concerned about my future. Somehow I always had that feeling inside that it was gonna be okay. And you know, I, ha I always had my mom just backing me up and just letting me know like, you know what? Do what you wanna do. Like, you can do anything that you wanna do. I knew I wanted to do art but I know exactly how I was gonna do it. I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can become a graphic designer, you know, creating digital art and that way that's something very commercial and I can make money out of that very easily, I thought. So I took a graphic design class in high school. Even though I didn't absolutely hate it, well, I kind of did. <laughs> I kind of, it was fun while it lasted, but I sat in front of the computer and I knew that is not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I hated being in front of a computer. So at that point, what I thought I had figured out wasn't the case. I was like, okay, now what? Found out about a video class and I was like, oh, that sounds fun. All right, let me take it. One of our projects was to do a little music video. Absolutely fell in love. Right there, I knew this is what I wanted to do. At that age, I would watch a lot of YouTube videos, uh, music videos on YouTube, and I was always fascinated. I'm like, okay, I got it. I wanna be a music video producer and director. I wanna direct little music videos. I would always watch these vi videos and, and start thinking of the story that I would tell with that song. So I was excited. I'm like, okay, like, I love this. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I wanna do. Of course, I knew that wasn't gonna be easy. You always hear how tough of an industry that is. So I said, well, you know, I'm just gonna sign up for a program, just take the classes and, and see where that goes. So I found this program at UTA in Arlington. It was the program that I wanted, but mainly I ended up going to that school because that is what I could afford. I majored in fine arts with a concentration in film and video, and it was the best of both worlds. Like I had art and I had film, which was like, oh my God, this is, Amazing! I was getting to do both things. You know, I'm taking these classes and I'm I'm excited about them because I like the subject. I loved everything about it. Going to college, you start hearing questions from other people that they're like, okay, well, w what are you studying and what are you gonna do? Blah, blah blah. I allowed that to really start getting in my head as to, okay, what am I gonna do when I finish this? Like when I get out of college, like. How am I gonna get a job? How am I gonna make money? It's very famous that artists don't make any money. There's always the struggling artist, but those things got in my head and I'm thinking, okay, how am I gonna make money? How am I gonna make money? You know what? I'm gonna secure a job by getting a diploma on something that can help me land any kind of job basically so i thought okay maybe maybe i'll get into finances so i went met with a counselor and decided to switch major and i switched it to finance the same afternoon i went and met with one of my professors and i talked to him and i was telling him i'm like hey i did this and that he sat with me forever and just he he told me, I see you have talent. I see the talent in you. It would be very unfortunate that you don't use the talent that you have. And told my mom about it. She's like, well, you know, you should not worry about money. Now, I did not come from a rich family, but my mom has never ever cared about money. And she's like, just don't worry about it. Everything will work itself out. I think that you should do what your heart tells you. So that night, just the words of my mom and then the words of my professor kept 
resonating in my head and him telling me that he saw talent in me. I'm like, oh, that was like a, a, a warm hug to my heart when he said those things to me. So next day, I went and met up with the counselor again. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry to waste your time, scratch that. I'm gonna stay in art and keep moving forward with it. While I was going to college, I was doing a bunch of promo work. I have a promotional work and modeling jobs. So during that time, I ended up meeting some people from the Cowboys and I ended up working on the promo team, being part of the promo squad. That was my first interaction with the Cowboys. Now, when I was about to graduate, I went and talked to my manager and I told him, I'm like, hey, thank you so much for, for everything, but I'm not coming back next year. I'm gonna stop doing promo work because I wanna be able to focus on my career and just kind of take that path of basically what I studied, which was film. So he's like, oh, sorry to hear that, but uh, okay, great. Not much later after that, I got a call from him and he told me, here's a job that you might be interested in. At that time, I was just like, okay, cool. I was not that ex like, even on the phone, when he told me about it, he's like, are you not excited? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I'm just, I mean, I'm just processing. But of course, back then, although I had been living around DFW for a while and I see all the cowboy stuff everywhere, I never grew up watching football. Uh, that is not a sport that you watch in the Dominican Republic, you watch baseball. So I was just not around sports, really. Like I played soccer in high school, but other than that, I just, I was never really exposed to the sport. So I was like, Okay, um, thank you. <laughs> I said, why not? Let me go interview for it. You know, I didn't study journalism. I did not study broadcasting. So <laughs> all of that was new territory for me. But I said, you know what? You know that saying, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade? Me coming from Dominican Republic, like, psh, lemonade is way too easy to make. But making lemon pie, that's another thing, you know? I knew nothing about lemon pie. So, sorry, that was a really bad analogy, but you get my point. Like, I didn't know anything about football, but yeah, I was like, you know what? Let's go for it. Even though I had been working on the promo team and going to games and yeah, you see fans and all that, but out of that, I, I did not really have the knowledge of how big the Cowboys were. I didn't know anything about the sport. One, I thought football was so stupid. I, in my head, I'm like, they just go and hit each other, fall to the ground, get back up and do it all over again. You know, that's, that's how I saw it. I'm like, oh my God, how can people enjoy this? Like each play only lasts like five seconds. That's dumb. So I, I did not understand it. At that time, you know, I was just very ignorant of the sport. Fast forward, I get their interview. I was very honest. I'm like, look, I am willing to learn. I'm willing to put in the work. I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything because I don't but I'm willing to do the best that I can do. And so I did, and it was hard. It was really hard at first because not only was it a new territory, but it was also me having to learn a new language in English and in Spanish. Like I did not know any of the terminology of anything. So I had to learn the sport. I had to learn little by little. Eventually, I mean, now, <laughs> I'm still here, I'm still working for them, so it didn't go that bad, you know? It's been like five years that I've been working with the Cowboys and doing all the Spanish content. It, it took me a long time to kind of start feeling comfortable speaking about the sport now. I get upset, I get happy, I get sweaty, I get nervous, I get all kinds of different emotions. I mean, if you're a Cowboys fan, you know, what that is like, you know? You go through a very wide range of emotions. While I was having to learn all of these new things, having to learn the sport and, and everything, I had stopped creating art at all. Like, that was the first time in my life that I was not making art. I just didn't really have time for it. But there were, that was the first time in my life that I was just like, away from it. And one day I was, having anxiety and I'm like oh my god oh my god you know I, I suffer from anxiety but yeah that's a whole another topic I was having anxiety one day and out of nowhere I decided to 
take out a canvas and I started painting and when I did it was like oh my god it reminded me of what it feels like or what I feel like when I paint it allowed me to just kind of detox from the world I see art as a very therape therapeutic therapeutic ther oh my gosh I will not be able to say this word therapeutic Ooh. That sounded kind of good. Therapeutico, okay? Pues es como una terapia. El arte es terapia. Art is therapy. But yeah, it's very relaxing and relieving and it helps me kind of stay sane. It helps me not go crazy in this crazy world. It helps me be happy inside and emotionally anytime I'm going through something. That's when I started saying, okay, well, you know what? I can do both. Things. Like just because I'm working for the Cowboys doesn't mean I have to be away from art and I had reached a certain comfort level to where now I knew what I was doing at work I, I, I could defend myself, you know, and I could just find the right balance in my life I love everything that I do, but you know, there are certain things that make your heart beat a different way so yeah that, that's basically it you know right now that is something that I want to start sharing with you guys I'm not a teacher but I can give you little tricks and little techniques and little things that, that can help you find the artist in you how poetic que poeta eh que poeta the artist in you we all have an artist in ourselves. If there is anything else you want me to talk about on my next video, let me know. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching and se fini. Okay, yeah. Yeah, me cancel la